banking confidence fell from a moderate 58 index points in the second quarter to 41 in the third. We're now joined in studio by Emilio Pera, Lead Banking and Capital Markets Director at Ernst & Young, to take us through the third quarter banking confidence index. Thanks so much, Emilia, for joining us uh, today. Well, we've had this, uh, the results being released to the market, and as I say, we've seen this banking confidence uh, shifting lower, and that after a strong Q2 performance. To what extent was this in line with expectations on your end? I suppose if you look at global markets and um, the crisis that we're currently experiencing in um, Europe, what we saw uh, to, uh, when um, Ireland also went through mm -hmm. a similar uh, challenge, um, the investment banking um, confidence levels immediately dropped down. I suppose that's in fear of uh, the liquidity challenges that we've experienced during the, the depth of, of the credit crisis and, and that uncertainty is definitely um, filtering through to, to the investment banking sector. Mm -hmm. I suppose also if you look at the retail banking, um, although um, it has been more volatile um, in, in the last year, um, the expectation was that um, as um, markets recover, exports will improve, um, employment will improve, property prices will improve. And I think especially those two points, the property prices that only showing marginal growth and um, employment figures still being very disappointing um, is, is um, a concern to the banks. Having said that, let's uh, drill down into mm. the retail sector specifically, retail banking. Uh, I mean, profits from the earnings that have filtered through over the period have are still showing positive growth momentum, but bulk of that relating to a reduction in non-performing loans and lending uh, tightening as well. So is that the concern that's primarily mounting despite the fact that we're seeing profits filter through? It's that growth outlook that's concerning the sector? Absolutely. If you, if you look at the half-year results and, and, the, and the full-year results for first round that came through, mm -hmm. definitely a, a very positive or more positive um, outlook than what we, we saw um, in the beginning of the year. But I, I suppose it is more looking at, at what to expect going into quarter four um, and, and the, the factors that I mentioned and the impact on that um, for the banking sector. What it has done, though, is force banks to refocus their operations, not only from an of, uh, operational efficiency side of things but also in terms of concentrating on revenues outside of uh, you know interest income and we've seen that rise in non-interest income coming through so how are you rating the kind of innovation that we're seeing in the sector right yes. now I think especially on the retail banks uh, cost containment was was a key driver and we saw that coming um, down quite nicely but as you um, say um, a, a number of um, innovative pr products that's being released uh, definitely a focus on improving or increasing the, the fee income versus, mm -hmm. uh, versus um, interest income. Um, so definitely um, uh, that is partly uh, due to uh, finding other sources of revenue um, with interest rates being low and um, uh, the market being still quite depressed, but also new players coming into the market um, that is resulting in, in additional competition for the banks. If we're looking for a silver lining here, I mean, uh, one's got to be a little bit optimistic, one would assume, about that outlook moving forward because just these changes that have been initiated within the retail banking segment uh, would assume that you're looking at leaner, meaner operations for when that cycle turns. Absolutely, and and, and, and what we've seen is a steady rise, and that's um, also uh, the comment that you know it, it, it's from a moderate um, level where it was, but it was uh, on an increasing trend. Especially investment banks have shown a consistent improving trend um, over the last year. Retail banks slightly more volatile, but also showing Im improving trends, and also um, in the results results um, that is reflected. Um, the underlying data definitely looks more positive than mm -hmm. what it did a year ago, but I think the, the global uncertainty um, is something, um, and what we've seen over the last couple of years, um, these shocks um, does have an impact, and I suppose that is what's causing the, the levels at the moment. You mentioned heightened competition on the one hand influencing the way banks operate right now. What about regulatory and legislative changes as well? How's that impacting the kind of business models we're seeing evolve right now? Um, if, if you consider the report that was uh, released in the UK last week around the, the structure of mm -hmm. banks um, and, and new regulations that is proposed, um, or not regulations, but um, some of the recommendations out of that report and the potential impact as it filters through into regulations on, on how banks operate, looking at products, um, retail banks.
banking versus investment banking that might have to be split and and also the nature of, of the banking operations we talked around liquidity challenges that um, local banks faces under um, Basel 3 and the size of our mortgage books so definitely um, although there is some time the banks are refocusing and challenging themselves around their product offerings but also the profitability of the individual product lines uh, how much challenge or headwind do you see uh, banks facing as they venture down this path because I mean uh, we mentioned earlier they're focusing on non-interest income from here on out and that being a key driver for future earnings but it's going to prove very difficult and I was reading in the report where you've got a very vocal finance minister coming to the fore and watching for what he terms excessive uh, bank charges moving forward. Yes, I think there's been a number of comments um, from government um, over the last couple of months around um, and especially with the introduction of the Consumer Protection Act and, and we, we now have also the Twin Peaks or mm -hmm. changes in regulatory structures that, that will also focus on, on the consumer and, and consumer protection and, 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 and the banks or especially the larger banks um, have been under pressure for a number of years around their bank fees. Uh, but I suppose what we're also seeing is increased uh, competition in the market. So um, I, I do hope that that will balance out. Well, Emilio, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Emilio Pera is Lead Banking and Capital Markets Director at Ernst & Young.